The year is 565 AD. In what is now known as Scotland, Columba, an Irish abbot and missionary, is making his way to a local king, following the river Ness, when he stops at a distressing site. Along the bank of the river, a group of locals are burying a man. When prompted, the group tells Columba that the man was killed by an unidentified creature in the waters. One of Columba's companions, unfazed by the tale, goes out into the murky river. As Columba and his group watch, a large creature comes out of the dark waters, preparing to attack the man. According to the legend, recorded over a hundred years after his death, Columba held up his hands to the sky and called on God, demanding the creature go back with all speed. The beast promptly fled, allowing the man to swim safely. The use of allegory is extremely common in the story of the saints, leading us to consider this story with a bit of salt. That said, the supposed encounter was far from the last. This is the earliest sighting of the Loch Ness Monster. Loch Ness is a large freshwater loch, or lake, in the Scottish Highlands. The water is notably dark with poor visibility due to peat content in the bank soil. At its deepest, the loch is an astonishing 230 meters. But it is not just an isolated body of water. It is connected to several other lochs and rivers, forming an interconnected ecosystem. In this ecosystem live European eel, brown trout, Atlantic salmon, and more. But of all of the animals that make Loch Ness their home, the one we are most interested in is much more mysterious and not so easily named. While the quiet loch was teeming with stories of a ferocious beast in the time since Columba, the legend did not take off in the modern era until the 1900s. The first modern sighting of the Loch Ness Monster occurred in April 1933. A couple traveling on a newly finished road by Loch Ness reported witnessing a large animal crossing in front of their car and disappearing into the water. The pair said it was like a dragon or prehistoric monster. Local papers ran the story and, before long, additional sightings bubbled to the surface. The next year, Robert Kenneth Wilson, an English physician, photographed perhaps the most famous image of the creature, known as a surgeon's photograph. This picture showed the creature as a long-necked, plesiosaur-like animal. A plesiosaur is an aquatic reptile long believed extinct that had fins, a round body, and a long snake-like neck. It was when the Daily Mail published this photograph that the creature became a true international star. But these sightings from the 1930s are certainly not the only encounters. In a National Geographic video, Loch Ness Sightings, The Truth Behind, a woman who lived on the shores of the loch describes a sighting that happened on her way home in September of 1990. As she came down the road, she looked out to the loch and saw what appeared to be an overturned boat in the water. It was dark gray and shining, about 25 to 30 feet in length and 8 to 10 feet to the top to the back of the body. She glanced at it a few more times before it disappeared. She went on to say that it was similar to the pictures she's seen of plesiosaurs. To skeptical scientists, she said, wait until you see it. Once you've seen it, you'll believe there's something there, definitely. In another supposed encounter, Dr. Rines, a prolific inventor and lawyer, looked out into the bay and saw what looked like the back of an elephant, about four or five feet out of the water. He described it as having a whale or elephant type of texture to it. He said, from that point on, I knew there was a Loch Ness monster. These are just a few of the thousands of reported sightings. After the first modern sighting in 1933, the Daily Mail hired Marmaduke Wetherill, a big game hunter, to try and capture the monster. The hunter had been scouring the loch for days when he came across a set of footprints from a large four-legged animal. After the discovery, the Daily Mail released the headline, Monster of Loch Ness is not legend, but a fact. This grand announcement and the proof of the footprints pulled people from all over to the banks of Loch Ness all anxiously hoping to catch sight of the monster, lovingly called Nessie. The footprints that Marmaduke discovered were plastered and sent into the British Natural History Museum. There, it was ruled that the footprints were not of a sea beast, but of a semi-aquatic animal, a hippopotamus. Specifically, a single stuffed foot of a hippopotamus. This hoax took some of the wind out of the legend sails, but sightings continued to roll in and people continued to investigate Loch Ness. 
In the 1960s, different British universities used sonar equipment to explore Loch Ness, and while these expeditions did not uncover concrete evidence of a large aquatic animal, they did uncover underwater objects that seemed to move that they could not identify. In the 1970s, Boston's Academy of Applied Science used photography and sonar to explore the loch. A photo from the dive appeared to show a flipper of some type. Again, it was likened to a plesiosaur. The Academy was started by Dr. Robert Rines, who reported seeing the creature in the 1970s. Dr. Rines lived an interesting life even outside the Loch Ness Monster. He held over 800 patents, developed gear that could improve resolution on radar and sonar images, and his inventions helped to uncover the wreck of the Titanic. He also played a violin duet with Albert Einstein in his youth. As covered previously, Dr. Rines first became interested in the monster after reportedly sighting it while at a friend's house. The sighting led to several trips out to the loch and unique photos that came with it. What he found during his investigation led him to believe that the loch may be on top of what was, at one time, the ocean floor. He thought it was possible that a sea-based dinosaur could have adapted to the freshwater environment of the loch. But after the 70s, there were fewer sightings reported of the creature, and Ryan thought the creature may have died. Were you to visit the loch today, as one of the over 400,000 tourists who visit annually, you could do more than just hunt for the monster. There are boat tours, hiking trails, and many waterfalls to explore. Today, tourism to the loch brings in over a million pounds a year to the community. This number alone has led some to believe that, like the Mothman, perhaps Nessie was invented to drive tourism to the quiet loch. But if not a hoax born to support the local economy, what was the Loch Ness Monster? As mentioned, common theory is that it was a plesiosaur, an extinct marine reptile with a round, whale-like body and long, snake-like neck that lived over 200 million years ago. It was estimated to be around 15 meters long and weigh over 100,000 pounds. It was also thought to have one of the largest bite forces of any known animal. Some think that this explanation is possible, as prehistoric creatures long assumed extinct have been found before. For example, a coelacanth, a type of ancient fish thought to have died out with the dinosaurs, was found alive in 1938 near South Africa. Interestingly, this was around the same time that the Loch Ness Monster sightings were reported across the world in Scotland. This proof of a creature living past the time of the dinosaurs bolsters the hope in those who believe that Nessie might be a lone plesiosaur. Others suspect that what people believe are sightings of the creature are actually just people witnessing a unique current in the loch, wherein a floating object seems to move against the shifting waters, making it appear to swim. In 2019, scientists took samples of the loch in an effort to better understand the animals who lived there. Unfortunately, their tests did not return great news for Nessie fans. No evidence of a plesiosaur, large fish, or any other large animal DNA was discovered in the dark waters. However, there was a significant amount of eel DNA. Scientists did not rule out that Nessie sightings may actually have been sightings of a very large eel. But, as Dr. Ryan supposed, the monster could have very well died off in the decades prior. It remains lost in the deep, murky loch. Did the Loch Ness Monster ever exist? Or was it only a hoax created to drive tourism to the area? While recent data suggests that there is no monster, some still choose to believe. Sometimes, believing is enough. And wouldn't the world be just a little bit more interesting if we believed there were a monster? Thank you for listening to tonight's story. Tune back in next week as we dive into the world of cryptids, extraterrestrials, and the great unknown. Good night. Good night.